Did you know that you can use Photoshop's generative fill for video? Let me show you. Let's say I want to use this horizontally shot video for a vertical video. If I expand it, you can tell it's too zoomed in and we lose a lot of the environment. So let's save a still frame from this video and then open it in Photoshop. Now I'll select the top part and click generate without entering any text. Next, I'll select the bottom part and for this I'll put in a prompt, for example, books. I'll remove the background layer and then save this as a PNG file. This will make sure that the middle part of the image remains transparent. Next, I will import this PNG file in my video editor and then place it on top of my original video. Et voila, we have vertically expanded our horizontal video. A similar use of Photoshop's generative fill is great when you have a vertical photo and you want to expand it on the sides. Especially in a photo like this where there is a lot of textured information, it would be very difficult, if not impossible, to do this with something like content-aware fill. So let's select the sides here. And I'll make sure to have some overlap with the image. And then I won't enter any text, but simply hit generate. And Photoshop reads the image and comes up with new items that actually match the photo and you can tell it even matches the lighting perfectly. We can also use the generative fill to add objects to our images to make them more interesting or to make whatever creative idea we might have in mind. In this image I would like to add a bridge across the waterfall. So I'll simply make a selection where I want that bridge to be and then enter old wooden bridge. And I can have a look at the different options that Photoshop has created. And if I don't like any of them, I can just hit generate again and Photoshop will create three more. But I can even change the prompt to, for example, modern metal bridge, and it will then create three metal options. And our ideas definitely don't have to be realistic. I can, for example, ask Photoshop to generate a turtle in the water here. However, as you can tell, it doesn't look quite right. The turtle looks like it's floating on top of the water instead of actually being in the water. So how can we make sure that the turtle is actually in the water? We start by entering the quick mask mode by clicking the icon here or by pressing the shortcut Q. And in the quick mask mode, we can actually paint our selections. Next, we will fill it with black, so make sure your background color is black, and then press Command or Control Backspace. Now we have a completely red overlay, meaning nothing is selected. So I'm going to select a foreground color, but I'm not going to choose white, because that will create a 100% intensity selection, similar to when we use a normal selection tool. If we want to make sure that our turtle is blended into the water, we will need to make a less intense selection. So instead of choosing white, I will choose 35% brightness here, which will create a 35% intensity selection. And then I'll roughly paint the shape of a turtle, and then press Q again, and we will have that area selected at 35%. Now you can't see that selection simply because Photoshop doesn't show the marching ants when less than 50% is selected. Now let's ask for a sea turtle again. And as you can tell, this time we get a turtle that's actually inside the ocean. Another really helpful way to make use of Photoshop's generative fill is when removing difficult objects from a photo. In this example, it would be very difficult to remove these bicycles with, for example, the clone tool. So let's see if generative fill can help us out here. I'll use the lasso tool to create a selection of the bicycles. And I found that it works better making a slightly larger selection, so not simply selecting the bicycles, but something more like this, so a pretty wide selection around the bicycles. And again, no prompt needed for this, simply hit generate. And there you go, it removed those bicycles beautifully. If you've ever been to a popular tourist destination, you'll know how difficult it is to get a nice clean shot without any other tourists in your frame. Luckily now, with Photoshop's generative fill, we don't have to worry about this anymore. I will just make a rough selection of all these people using the lasso tool. And if you hold shift, you can make multiple separated selections using the lasso tool. And then without entering anything in the text box, I will just hit generate. And I'll have a look through the options, and I think I like this one the most. So now I have a beautiful clean image, and while we're at it, wouldn't it look amazing if there was some water here and the Taj Mahal reflecting in it? So I'm going to make another selection where I want the water to be, and again I'm using the lasso tool, and I'm going to enter reflective water and hit generate and just wait for a bit, and then have a look at these different options. Doesn't that look cool? Now we've already added a turtle to one of the photos, but for some reason the generative fill sometimes has difficulties generating living things like animals. Let's see what we get when I ask for a tiger in this jungle photo. Now you can tell it doesn't look very good. We just get these weird cartoony looking tigers. 
So I'm going to use this photo of a beautiful looking tiger. Hit select subject, which will create a reasonably good selection of the tiger. I will then hit command or control C to copy the tiger. And back in the jungle photo, I will hit command or control V to paste the tiger. Of course, this doesn't look very good. It looks very obvious that I just pasted this image of the tiger on top here, but we're going to fix that. Let's enter the quick mask mode by clicking the icon here or by pressing the shortcut Q. We will fill with black, so make sure that the background color is black and then press command or control backspace. And this time I want to paint with white, so I will make sure that my foreground color is white. Now I will paint over the edge of the tiger and include some of the background as well. We want to have a pretty wide selection, so Photoshop has enough data to work with. And once I'm finished, I will hit Q again and that will create this selection. Next, I won't enter any prompt, but simply hit generate. And as you can see, the generative fill has nicely blended the tiger into my background image. Another great feature of Photoshop's generative fill is when we want to replace the background, but actually not just replace it, but generate a new one. I'm going to create a selection of the car by clicking select subject, or I can use the object selection tool here. Next, I will invert the selection by clicking this icon here. That way I will have everything except the car selected. And I would actually like this car to be on a forest road. So I'm just gonna enter forest road and click generate. And let's have a look at the results. And I think they look pretty good. I think this one is probably my favorite. Photoshop's generative fill is actually so powerful that we can create an entire image out of nothing. I can start by making a selection at the bottom of my frame here and let's create a hillside meadow and then click generate. And I think I like this one. Now let's create a background, maybe some beautiful Alpine mountains. So I'm going to make a selection of the background here and then enter Alpine mountains. And I think these ones look pretty nice. Yep, I'm gonna go for this one. How about we add a windmill to the landscape? So I'm going to make a selection using the lasso tool somewhere where I want that windmill to be. And I'm going to enter windmill. And I think this one fits nicely. And perhaps let's add some water streaming to the landscape. So I'm going to make another selection where I want that stream of water to be. And to finish it off, maybe let's add a cow here. I'm going to draw a selection kind of looking like a cow and then enter cow. And okay, I think this one works fine. I'll choose that one. And isn't that impressive? The sky is really the limit with this new tool. But I'm interested to know what do you guys think about Photoshop's generative fill? Let me know in the comments what you like about it, what you hate about it, or how you use it. All right, that's it for me. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you learned something in this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.